Okay, so you need precise instructions to do this. Step number one and number two, reflection and gaining empathy. That's stage number one of the design process. Remember, empathize. Empathize is you need to get to know the person who is sitting next to you. And you're going to think about your own clear experience. Now, what do I mean by clear experience? I'm going to give you a list of things that you can think about. Designing a didactic program for your school. Lesson planning. Methodology. Cooperative learning. Dealing with the five language skills. Designing tasks and materials for your pupils. Lots and hots, according to Bloom. Resources for your clear class. Using authentic materials. ICT, assessing students' performance and progress by means of rubrics, a portfolio, the European language portfolio, tests, etc. Giving students feedback, error treatment, working collaboratively with other colleagues and making decisions with other language and content subject teachers. Coordination meetings at school. The relationship between the school and the families. Extracurricular and complementary activities. So lots of things. This is just meant to give you ideas about things that you can discuss in peers. Because you might have a problem connected with one of these issues. You see the point? So if you go to page number two, this first activity is individual work. I feel terrific, I feel wonderful in my clear experience when, for example, dealing with, I don't know, uh, funny activities in which your students practice oral skills because they love singing, they love dancing, they love moving around. So things you feel positive about. Right? So terrific is positive, it's not negative. And then I feel terrible when it comes, for example, to assessing my students. Because I don't actually have tools to assess both language progress and content progress. And that's really a problem for me and the team of, of people who work with me at my school. Okay, so that's a sort of introspective exercise that you have to do on your own. Things you you think are positive, things you think are negative, in your own clear experience. That's a very personal thing. Sorry. Steps one and two begin on page number three. I want you to gain empathy with the person sitting next to you. And we are going to put into practice one typical, prototypical design thinking strategy, which is the interview. One of the important things about conducting an interview properly, correctly, is what I call active listening. Active listening means you listen to what the other person is saying, mindfully. You don't interrupt that person. You empathize. You listen for feelings. You are sort of listening in between the lines. So this interview is going to give you pieces of evidence about your user's personality and needs. Now your user is your colleague, and your colleague may have lots of problems in his or her clear experience. Do you see the point? So we are still here, steps one and two, reflection, which is individual, page number two, page number three, gaining empathy, right? You could deal with one or several topics from the list, or you could even discuss any other topic, which I haven't mentioned at all, right? Well, then you've got steps three and four in your photocopies, which are about reframing the problem and point of view. 
So put simply, that is to say, you have to express by means of a simple sentence what the problem your colleague has is. Okay, so express the problem your colleague has in simple terms. Three and four. Number five is explore your classroom. That's still part of stage number two, which is define, right? Then we move to step six and seven, ideate and sharing. That is to say, think about your colleague's problem and suggest possible solutions to that problem. Of course, you will have to take turns, you know? Make sure each person in each pair has got the time to share their problems. Make sure you've got the opportunity to listen to the solutions proposed by the person sitting next to you. Step number eight, iterate, reflate and generate a new solution. Maybe you propose a solution which your partner doesn't find good enough. So you will have to suggest a different solution. Then you build or draw your solution. We can't use anything here, but you can draw a mind map, for example, or a spider graph, or you could use a posit. Okay, visual thinking. Or you could even build a model. And then you've got step number 10, which is share your solution, your definitive solution, and get feedback. Is that clear to everyone? Do you know what you have to do? I'm going to be moving around, so if you've got any problems, just raise your hands and I will try to solve your problem. Okay, so 40 minutes from now on.